Oh hey guys, my name's Christopher and today I'm going to talk about raising walls and then raising the roof on the shed. Insert dad joke about my dancing here. This is episode four of a nine part series if you're tuning along. I also have a feature length video detailing this entire build. You can check out this section in a little less detail with some different angles. And of course I've got a four minute time lapse if you're in need for something fun. Check those out and the other eight parts of this nine part series. And without further ado, let's just dive right on in. There's really no decent place for me to stand um, since the walls are already up and you've seen me on the inside. So here we are on the outside to talk. This process is one of the few things that I really did need help with from another person. Now, I'm a great big guy. I'm six foot five. I got like a 197 centimeter wingspan, things like that, which means I got a lot of leverage. Um, so this was a pretty good build for me, but it stretched my limits. And when you're raising a wall, it definitely pays to have somebody there to help you lift it and hold it in place. So shout out to my wonderful wife who came and held these walls up while I tacked them in. Really straightforward process and very satisfying because at the end you truly saw what the rectangle you're building here is going to look like. So a couple things to note before you even get started. I went around and I traced a line in the very front. Everything for me I'm referencing with the front here and the accumulated errors can go in that back corner that nobody really sees. Not even the neighbors because there's a fence back there. That's just kind of how I reference things. So from the front here I traced out three and a half inches a line across the front. So when I had the first wall down I could use that as a reference point making sure everything was perfect and parallel with the skids and the floor that I put on. You know, it makes sense. You keep those accuracies, you know, going throughout the whole project and so they, the errors don't build up. So you put up wall number one. I put a nail in the corner there, probably a nail in the corner here, and then I filled it in. I got two nails every uh, 16 inches or so and I was making sure to go into the rims down below and if possible depending on where my studs were also the joists that were going across. Now you can easily find those because I've got the nails on the bottom of the floor on the inside. That was a good visual reminder. Sometimes you'll run into the problem of forgetting that you've got nails underneath the board that you just put down. You start nailing in, then you nail on top of a nail, and that sucks to pull those out, but you've got to. So just keep that in mind as you're putting your things down. So you do that for wall number one. Then uh, you put on a side wall, and that's great. Once that's up, you actually get some rigidity because you can nail it in the bottom, and then you nail in the corners to each other. Oh, so satisfying. My plans detailed how far I should space all of these nails out. I got my plans at iCreatables.com. They are not a sponsor for this video. They didn't even know I'm making these. I'm just giving them lots of free advertising because I thought they were awesome. A great repository for different plans to choose from. Yeah. So that side wall goes up, you got it nailed together, great, make sure everything is nice and plumb. This is an opportunity for you to kind of correct the sway if it's not, you know, exactly 90 degrees like this, if it's at like an 89 degree angle, make sure they're nice and plumb. I use the level a lot during this process. Get the side wall up, great. You do the back wall, is that right? No, I did the side and then I did the other side and then I did the back wall again because I'm accumulating all errors in that back corner and it makes sense on my project. I'm sure you've got a spot just like that in the project that you're doing. Great, you got walls one, two, three, four up. Now you're ready to put on the caps. I don't remember what they're actually called. I'm sure there is a construction term for them. Uh, but essentially this is, you know, 12 feet here and eight feet there. I put two eight foot caps along the side and then uh, 12 feet less uh, three and a half times two on the front. So what is that? 11 foot, five inches. Yes, going across the top. Because again, if this is 12 feet here and it ends at the end, you don't want just another 12 foot board on top of there. You want some overlapping. So that eight foot overlaps there. It makes sense when you're looking at the footage, I'm sure. Um, but just remember to do that. And that double capping will provide additional support when you're putting on the rafters, which is a perfect transition to putting on the rafters. These suckers are immensely satisfying to put up. And fortunately for me, my good neighbor, Mike, who you will never see on camera because he doesn't want to be on camera, but his house is right there. Uh, Mike lent me this massive ladder, which extended to like 24 feet if you put it out, but it was great and it was really, really stable. So I've got my ladder on the inside. I put on my outside joists 
first because they should be nice and flush with the walls, remembering that your sheathing is gonna go and make this nice seamless approach from top to bottom on the outside. You do those two first and as accurately as you can. Again, for me, for my reference, everything in the front had to be perfect because this is where most people are going to see it. So that was a perfect corner and that was a perfect corner up there. Then I spaced out the rest of my rafters. I think there were, what, five more on the inside? Eh, whatever, look at your plans. I put them up one by one uh, again, common reference point. Put it up there, make sure I've got 20 inches, 24 inches, whatever, on one side, tack one nail in, do the other side, tack it, and then, you know, shimmy and adjust as needed. And uh, yeah, you just do that all the way across. But there's something pretty important that I personally forgot to do, which is a perfect transition to things that I would do differently if I were to start over again. Item number one, and I completely forgot this, and it was in the plans and in other great videos that I watched. When you got the two end joists up, not joists, you know, rafters, put a stinking nail at the very top of each of the points and tie it nice and tight so you've got the center line up on the top and then all of the other uh, rafters that you're putting up, make sure that the peak is on that line. Aha! Remember in previous deep dive episodes I talked about accumulating errors um, and I had problems with my horizontal bars and the rafters? That all added up because I was making sure that the fronts were fine and therefore my peak isn't like, from your perspective, isn't perfectly straight like this. It kind of zigzags and it's minute. Um, it's maybe, you know, a quarter of an inch or three-eighths of an inch at the worst part deviated from that center line and you can't tell when you've got sheathing on top of it and then underlay and then lastly shingles and my caps of course because I sprung for something beautiful it's not even in this frame you'll see them in a later video um, but if you're striving for perfection just make sure you don't forget that part so I uh, raised up these four walls and a roof once in my life, I would really like to see a good old-fashioned Amish barn raising, if that's actually a thing outside of just the movies. I'm not in Amish territory, but I would love to see it, and this is the closest that I've ever come, and I may ever come. But once the walls were up, my next part was to put on my OSB sheathing and my vapor barrier, and from here on out, it's all me. No iCreatables.com plans, because the plans had me going a cheaper route with, like, plywood... Um, siding. Does that make sense? Like sheets of siding. And I just didn't want to do that, so I chose the way of pain and greater satisfaction. So the next video we're going to put up sheathing, and we're going to put up a vapor barrier and talk about why I did that. So be sure to subscribe and let me know other fun things in the comments. Can you tell I'm doing these all at one time at night because the shadows are going deeper and I'm getting a little bit crazier each time? Yes! Yes you can! See you in part five.